eliminate fear of loss and increase hope for gain. So I've covered some of this in here. And what we talked about is you must eliminate fear of loss and increase hope for gain. People don't buy things, they buy the pleasure, they buy the dream. The key to your success is paint the dream and elim eliminate any emotional fears the buyer has. So your potential buyers are looking for answers to their problems, they want reassurance, they're looking for someone to help them make a decision. So just in your own head, think about your own business in this way, what are the answers? And the answers, the, the problems are, the, are you commonly asked questions? The questions they're commonly asking you will identify what they're looking for and what their concerns are. So by answering their fears and, and painting the dream, your buyer will go, the buyer will go from fear of loss to hope for gain. Okay. So here's what I'm talking about here and understanding the psychology of your customer. And I guess this is learned in the hard school of selling cars. And, and you know what, the hardest part is when I put that up about you know, background being cars, is that the motor trade and the real estate, the trust factor is 3%. Right, so when I put that up there and put on an ex-car sales and it's like, you know, we get pigeonholed. But the bottom line is if you can sell cars in a highly competitive industry and stay um, honest, you can just about sell anything. And certainly you understand the psychology. So this knowledge that I'm teaching you is knowledge that to me is just natural, but it's not natural to most businesses. But this is important. You must get inside your customer's head and understand their fears, their concerns, their doubts. So while we're talking this in, when you're building your online presence, you've got to know what their fears or concerns or doubts are. Now when we come into a business ourselves, the first thing we do is sit down and go online and look and see if there's any traffic. Is there any traffic? Is anyone typing in you know, builders or real estate or accommodation, lakes entrance or whatever, or apartments or whatever. We look at that. If it's there, we know we can get the business owner on, on, on you know, a return on their investment. The next question that we ask is we sit down with the business owner and ask them lots of questions to understand their buyer. You've got to understand your buyer's concerns. You know, if it's building a house, are you another Simmons? How do I know you're not another Simmons? Right? or whatever it is, you know, how do I know the materials? All those concerns, you've got to open a, you know, a answer. Because we live in a bubble, and, and you know, now with, that, with, the, with, the, with the internet, etc. so we can't hide stuff anymore. So the way to beat that is go straight out and answer their fear and doubt or concerns beforehand. You know, is your room any good? How much money is it? Do I get tea and coffee? Is there a thing there? Da 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 da. You know, there's all those questions, you know, for running an event. You know, you need to answer all those, those things. Not only just be online, but this is the next step of it. Because this is taking them down the road to a sale. What is their main motivation to buy? You need to understand what that, what that is. Is it love, greed, guilt, fear, or pride? They're the, they're the main primary drivers that is there, you know, the greed factor can come into, um, um, you know, the wealth creation. Man, just have a look at, you know, how to get rich quick, how much of that's happening around, what's the motivation behind that? Greed. The pride thing can come under the motor vehicle, you know, does a $90,000 Mercedes-Benz do any better job than a $30,000 something else. Well, it doesn't, but there's a prestige and pride there. So they're the primary drivers that there is. That's just giving you some of the ones that can be there. Lack of trust is the major obstacle to doing business in today's marketplace. We can't even trust our politicians. We live in a society where they'll look at us and, and just bald face tell us what they're going to do and then do the opposite. We're broken promises. You know, there's a generation that's my grandfather and whatever, a handshake was a handshake, you never sign contracts. Don't happen anymore. So we're in a society that we just basically, there's no trust. So you have to back this up. You have to be able to you know, overcome that. And testimonies, and, and that is, is the way to do it. And that's why you know, I'm posting up testimonies of what we're doing ourselves, and you need to do that for yourself. And the other thing is people are looking for solutions. So you become a, not a salesman, you're a problem solver. You're a problem solver. You know, so, it's a, so people are looking for solutions, you know. 
I've got a flat battery, I've got, you know, whatever it is, I've got this thing, situation I want to solve. You provide the solutions for them. They're looking for someone to help them make a decision. And they don't want to be sold to. Nobody wants to be sold to. They want to buy things. People don't buy things. They buy pleasure, the dream, and they want to know how much you know, and they want to know how much you care. Now this number 11, it was just yesterday, I just changed that because of an expression that they don't want to know, people don't want to know how much you know, they want to know how much you care. And I realised when I was put it in, I thought, hey, that don't match up. Because this day and age, they do want to know how much you know. Yeah, how do you know what you're talking about? How many people could fill this room if they really, would be in this room if they really knew that I knew what I was talking about? You know, so it's the same thing. There's a lack of trust or whatever. Most of you here are come because we've had some personal contact, um, you know, with you. I'm waffling a bit there, but that's not quite lining up. But most times it's, it's I'm just, I'm losing my line of thought. Let me just move on. Okay, trust and relationship. Gauge your customer, engage your consumer, answer every question they have about your products and services. Um, so not just being on the front page of Google, if you're there and you're not building trust and relationship with your readers, it still won't fly. So this is what I said about, I call it the road to a sale. It's taking your consumer by the hand and overcoming every fear, doubt and objection. It's a step-by-step -step process, closing one gate at a time or objection at a time. It's about building trust and relationship to a tipping point where the buyer is predisposed to buy from you. And here it is. Okay, now, I got this down to a fine art with, with cars and it was one of the reasons why I was super successful at it and then also had the ability to train others and teach others to do the same thing. And that's why we had this huge success with the dealerships and stuff. But that didn't mean that we ripped people off because that just doesn't fly. And, but, but, it was a ma but it was the ability to guide people to a conclusion where they bought from you. So build trust with you in, in, uh, in that regard. You've got to do the same thing. Now this buyer, they come online here, and I'm going to talk about this shortly, but they come online and every objection, you've got a, and I know when it was with a car, was like what I termed as closing little gates. Now, if you have trouble with salesmen or selling, well, I don't know, you bump into this, I don't know how you're going to overcome it. Does anyone have a problem with salespeople? Does anyone have a problem with selling? No? Don't use it as the term selling. Use it as I'm a problem solver and it might help you. But understand that you've got to change that around to I'm um, solving problems. You, you, ta you know, I'm talking about they're answering all their questions, objections. When you want them to book online, Roz, with your apartments, apartments, isn't it? Yes. Apartments. When so you want them, every perceivable possible question you've got to answer online. Answer every one of those online as much as you can. Okay. Now. Sorry. Sorry? On the website. On the website or through Facebook or whatever the whole whole one is. Now, if you go onto the motel in, uh, we, we registered the domain name motel in Bansar, but it's Mitchell on Main. But if you go to that site, we did a video of every different type of room. So you walk through every room. And then we backed it up with testimonies, which I'll talk about later. But it's whatever way that you can do is to answer their questions, because they're not going to come near you. And the chances are, I know from a fact with with the tourism is that the people are not only in Australia, but there's a fair audience outside of Australia. So if they're a long way away, you can't, they can't just like come to the local information centre and pull out a brochure and go, well, I'm here. What, where am I going to book? That's not going to work, is it? They can't do that. So it's got to all happen online for you. 